After you've pre-processed and set up a model for a single subject, you'll need to do the same steps for all of the subjects in your data set. This may seem tedious, but doable. An alternative, however, is to script your analysis. Just as an actor has a script which tells him what to say, where to stand, and where to move, so you can write a script that tells your computer how to analyze your data sets. This has the double benefit of automating your analyses and being able to analyze data sets of any size. The code for analyzing two subjects, or 200, is virtually identical. First, we will create a template that contains the code needed to analyze a single subject, and then we will use a for loop to automate that analysis for all of the subjects. Scripting in the con toolbox is done with the command called con underscore batch, which takes a structure as an argument. A structure is a MATLAB data type that organizes several variables into containers called fields. The structure fields expected by the con batch command are the following. File name, subjects, parallel setup, denoising, analysis, results, and QA. In other words, the variable that we will pass as an argument to the con batch command needs the fields listed above. If any of the fields aren't filled in, they will revert to the defaults specified on the con batch webpage, which you can find in the link below. It looks something like this. So how do we create this structure? In fact, we already have, even if you weren't aware of it. Each time you save your project, a .mat file is created. This .mat file can be loaded into the MATLAB terminal by using the load command. For example, if you've been following along with the tutorials up to this point, you have created a .mat file called arithmetic.mat. If you are in the directory containing all of the subjects, you can load it by typing load arithmetic.mat. This returns a structure in your workspace called con underscore x. When you type con underscore x, you should see the following text returned. Each of these fields contain the values that you entered into each tab in the GUI. For example, we can display the values that were entered in the setup tab by typing con underscore x dot setup, which returns several fields. Note the correspondence between the values entered in these fields and the values in the con GUI that we entered in the previous tutorial. If we want, we can edit the values within the con x structure from the MATLAB terminal, save it as a .mat file, and then load it into the con toolbox. The edits we make in the MATLAB terminal should then be reflected in the GUI. Try this by typing the following line of code in the MATLAB terminal con underscore x dot setup dot rt equals, and then in brackets, one, 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 six ones. This replaces the original value of 3.56 with a value of one. We can then save the updated con x structure into our dot mat file by typing save, parentheses, single quotes, con arithmetic underscore sample dot mat. I'm choosing a name at random, just something easy to remember. A comma, single quotes, con underscore x. This uses the MATLAB save command, which requires two arguments. The dot mat file to be written and any values or structures to be saved into it. In this case, we save the con x structure into the dot mat file. If you now load it from the con GUI, by clicking on open, once this loads, and then con arithmetic sample dot mat, you should see the number and the repetition time fields matching what we specified in the MATLAB terminal. The con x structure can also be used to specify menu options. For example, the batch that setup section of the con help page says this about the field acquisition type. One or zero, continuous acquisition of functional volumes. This is a binary variable with one indicating a continuous acquisition of functional volumes. The one in brackets 
means that this is the default. If we don't explicitly include this field in our code, it will be set to a value of one. If on the other hand, we set this to zero, it will be the other option that is available, which is sparse sampling. As an exercise, go back to the MATLAB terminal and set the field con underscore x dot setup dot acquisition type to zero. Use the same code as before to save it into this con arithmetic sample dot mat file, and then we can load it in the con GUI using project open and then selecting that mat file. As expected, the acquisition type has changed from continuous to sparse. Having seen how Khan creates a MATLAB structure from the GUI, we will now create our own structure using MATLAB code. The structure will be called batch, and it will contain fields indicating which files to load and which options to run. For the rest of this video, we will be using a script that is already made, which you can find in the link in the more info box down below. From this web page, click on raw, and then right click anywhere in the window. Save it, eliminating the .txt extension first into your con demo directory. From the MATLAB terminal, you could run the script at any time by typing con underscore batch underscore template and pressing enter. But for now, we will step through each block of code and talk about what it does. So I'm going to open it up in the MATLAB editor window. The first block of code in the script will load the anatomical and functional files. It uses a recursive search to look into every directory below the current directory to find the files matching the string that you specified. This is done with the con dir command, which takes a string as an argument. If you want to load several subjects, you can use a regular expression with something such as an asterisk. To learn more about this concept, see the link below on the Unix tutorial on wildcards. Whichever method you choose, make sure that the end subjects variable matches the total number of subjects that will be selected. For example, if there are six subjects in the current directory and you are using a wildcard to select the resting state data, you would set end subjects to six. If I copy and paste this block of code, it should return that there are six subjects and one session per subject, which has been loaded. The next block of code We'll first create the arithmetic scripted.mat file, which we will then populate with the rest of our fields, and also the setup tab, which extends from about here to about here. So if we run this block of code, these four loops, for example, will set in this field bash.setup.functionals all of the functional files that we selected with the code above. We can look at this using cell array notation. And we find that, for example, in the very first field is the first file for the first subject. For the second subject, that file's loaded, and so on for all six subjects. And this is also done for the structural files as well. Also note that here we have specified which preprocessing pipeline that we will do, default MNI. If you recall earlier in the preprocessing module, we used the default MNI preprocessing pipeline, which is simply what we are indicating here in MATLAB code. And the same thing for the interleaved Siemens slice order. If, for example, you wanted to change this to something else, if we go back to the con batch web page and look for slice order, we could enter any of these other options to best match the parameters of your experiment. If you want, you can also load a custom atlas, which is discussed more in the link to Appendix C down below. This is a more advanced user option, so I'm not going to cover this right now, but be aware that it is an option. After that, we have things like the denoising step, in which case I've only changed one option, just to show you how you can change certain parameters for each of the different tabs. For example, the bandpass filter, I could change from the default of about 0.08 to 0.01 to 0.1. These other options here, such as done, mean to execute that step. And overwrite, yes, 
will overwrite any previously written results. If you wanted to change it so that it throws an error before overwriting anything, you could change this to null. For now, I'm simply going to copy and paste it. And same thing for the analysis part, which will run both first and second level analysis. These last four lines will first run the actual bash that we just specified up above, and then we'll open the Kongui and load the results automatically once it's complete. So again, I could run all of this by copying and pasting everything into the terminal, simply typing the name of the script or doing it piecemeal as I am right here. But as we start this, it will run everything that we specified up above with all the parameters and options that we have set. And this will be the exact same thing as if we clicked everything and selected everything in the con GUI. Once it's finished, you should see something like this, which is exactly the same thing we saw doing everything by hand through the GUI. And that is scripting and that is con in a nutshell, in, in summary, just what you need to get started. I hope you can see how that scripting would be used to adapt to your particular study and make analyzing everything much less tedious and much more efficient. So thank you again, we finished another module. I'm going to celebrate a little bit. There's still a couple, as of right now, this is May, 18th in the evening, a couple that I still have left to do to complete the entire thing, but this formally is the last video. So thanks again. Hope to see you all soon next time, and I hope you enjoy using the Con Toolbox. Goodbye.